I know some of you watched the first of the series on the wood stove in my trailer and thought the video was a little bit short, and it was. So to make up for it, the second part is a lot longer. As a matter of fact, it's the longest video I've ever done. And the reason being is that I spent six days and four nights in the wilderness trying out this wood stove, and it turns out I had a lot to say. I wanted to make sure I documented all the good things as well as the bad. So sit back and enjoy. I also appreciate all the tips that I got from my viewers, especially the one about making sure the cookie sheet is a little bit more secure. Now I'm past the testing stage, I will look into things like that and make sure nothing can jiggle loose or that I'm going to trip over things and all that. It will be addressed and you will see those results later on. But now I have to do this disclaimer. To put a wood stove in a trailer that is not designed to take a wood stove is an extreme risk. So please, before you even think of doing it, consult a professional, see if it's even legal, and uh, just be safe. You know, really, I don't want anybody to hurt themselves because they're trying to do something I did. I'm a risk taker, but really I'm an experimenter. And consider this an experiment. View this video for its entertainment value, and it's not a step-by-step -step instruction on how to kill yourself. Well, and now that I got that over, I can put it in the trailer. Well, here we go, folks. It's the live test. Got the damper open. Smoke is my main concern right now, more than anything else, because it's always at the beginning is when the smoke happens. Okay, it appears to be going, but to be honest with you, I had to shut the camera off for 10 minutes because I was going to run out of my my battery for my camera, but it took an awful long time. It took about 10 minutes with the blowtorch to actually get it started. It's quite apparent the initial burn sends smoke out the pipe, but has any escaped inside the trailer? See, I don't see any smoke coming out. I don't smell it. So, so far, seems to be going well. That means all the seals and gaskets are working to direct the smoke out as planned. Okay, so 15 minutes in, we've got a lot of flame going now, so I'm going to close the door here. I don't want it to get too hot, but I do feel there's a little bit of heat. You can still see my breath but the stove is definitely warming up. Okay, so the test is basically over because I ran out of fuel. It worked, but that two scoops, it wasn't even two scoops, was really only good for about, you know, 20 minutes. I'm just going to let it cool, and then I'll start it over again. Now some people will really think this is dumb, but I'm using my little portable Coleman propane stove to cook with. Why am I not using my wood stove, you ask? It's not my intent to use this wood stove 24 hours a day. I use it when I need it, and right now I need it when it gets really cold. Now it's not that it's not cold now, as you can probably see my breath. Let me just figure out what temperature it is right now. Uh, it's minus 4.2 Celsius, 24.4 Fahrenheit. Um, to me that's not super cold. Uh, 
I'm kind of used to winter camping. Uh, camping in a tent is what I did for decades. And uh, as long as my hands aren't freezing, I'm okay. I've got a nice winter coat. But there is a time where it gets a little too cold, especially when I'm sleeping, that I want that warmth. And that's the whole purpose of the wood stove. So it's about quarter after eight at night and the temperature has dropped considerably. It's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit or about minus eight Celsius. But this one says it's minus 10 Celsius, which is about 15. But let's go to the digital thermometer, which I had to warm up because it was too cold to even work. And what is it telling me? It's telling me minus 18 or zero Fahrenheit. So I don't know what I can trust. All I can tell you is that it's pretty darn cold. Anyway, I'm tired of talking because I'm freezing. So let's get her cranked up. Now, of course, the propane torch doesn't have a lot of pressure either at this temperature, so it might be a little while before I actually get this to burn. Well, it seems like it's going pretty good now. So I'm going to close the door. Now, some may be concerned, well, isn't it going to uh, consume all the air in the trailer, all the oxygen? And uh, yeah, that's kind of a concern with me as well. So what I did is I rigged up in my door vent a little bit of flexible hose. And that's what the can's for. So as long as it's still going now, it's not getting the air from inside the trailer, it's getting it from outside. And I know this is a little awkward, this is a silly place to have it, but this is still an experiment. If this works, then chances are I won't be putting it across the trailer like this. I'd probably have a hole in behind where the stove goes. But I just wanted to make sure it would actually suck in the air, and it seems like it is. So. I don't have to worry about suffocating at least. Now I just need to worry about am I actually going to get warm? The big benefit of wood pellets is that they burn extremely clean. In full burn there is no smoke out the stack whatsoever. Well half an hour in it seems to be pretty consistent. But let's see what the temperature is. Now, it's really hard to determine what I should be measuring, but I'm going to go with the curtains in the background here. And they're saying it's 57.9 degrees Fahrenheit or just under 15 degrees Celsius. It's definitely warmer in here, um, very comfortable. I can I can certainly uh, live with this temperature. We'll see if it goes any higher up. I also have I've tr I'm doing a few little things with insulation, which I'm still experimenting. Uh, so that might help keep the uh, the hot air in, but it's going to take a little bit more to really make any conclusions. I've got one window. This window here has plastic over it, but it's just clipped in. This window doesn't have any plastic over it at all, so I'm kind of half and half. I think I can improve on the insulation. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way. Okay, well, it's getting late. It's close to midnight. It's still going. Uh, the amount of pellets, it's about here right now, so in reality, it's probably got another hour, so yes, it will burn four hours. But the bad news is, it's so cold here, it's just not keeping up. And uh, it's a little cooler than I'd hoped for. I mean, right now, and this might not even work. 
Okay, so it's saying 1.2, so it's in reality just above freezing. Yeah, it's about 35, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. I had hoped it was going to stay around 50, but at this point, it's not happening. Oh, that's a cold one. It is now... It is now 7.14 in the morning. Uh, the stove went off at 7 o'clock. The last um, flicker. So, it actually... And I've, hey. I warmed the camera up by putting it on the stove. It's only about 90 degrees Fahrenheit on the top of the stove right now. But actual temperature, and I, I was sleeping with this, is inside is minus 7.6 Fahrenheit, which is... 22 below zero. So inside my trailer right now is 22 below zero. The sun's just starting to uh, to light light up the horizon outside. So was I warm last night? Well, I layered like crazy. I've got two sleeping bags, two sweaters, long underwear, uh, two pairs of socks. I really wish it wasn't this cold because. I wasn't intending to have this experiment in such extreme cold. I was really only thinking it was only going to be about minus 10 Celsius. But anyway, I'm going to flick on the... So there, I flicked on the propane furnace. I'm hoping the propane is going to ignite. Sometimes it won't when it's this cold. But... Uh, I got to get it warmer in here just for a little bit so I can I can warm my coat up at least. Since this was a test, I made sure I had plenty of backup plans. The propane stove was just one of them. Okay, morning has come. It's light outside. It's 7:37 in the morning and I've put the uh, the, the furnace on the trailer propane furnace on and it's having a hard time warming up. In the meantime, the stove is still on. Actually, I better take that off. I'm just warming, warming my frozen water and the thermometer. So hopefully with the stove and the uh, onboard uh, furnace, I can get it warm in here again because it was really, really cold. One thing that's really clear, the windows that didn't have the plastic covering over them definitely frosted up more than the ones that did. After a night of extreme cold and failure to reach my goal, I decided to take a walk and gather my thoughts, decide if I really wanted to continue this experiment. But being with nature always boosts my confidence, and it gave me the inspiration to carry on. Okay, well it's night two, so I get another chance to try out the stove. Hopefully it's not going to be as cold as last night, but for all I know it could even be colder. But let's start out and see what the temperature is here right now. And it is... 2.2 degrees Celsius, which is 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's just above freezing. Now what I'm going to do this time is, last time I tried it, I had difficulty lighting it. So what I'm going to try this time, I've just put a small amount of pellets in at the beginning, and I put little bits of paper. So I'll see if that's any easier to get it started. And if it is, then I'll just add the other pellets later on.
Well, it's really running hot now. And I'm going to leave it running hot. I really need to know what the capabilities of this stove are. It's been about 15 minutes and I really got a good heat right now. 63, 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 17.6 Celsius. And I can feel the heat. But the issue is, is it going to stay that way as it gets colder at night? Last night it didn't, but let's just see what happens tonight. Okay, now that it seems to be running at its peak, let's get some temperatures on the stove and everything else. So, the hot spot is usually right there, and that's reading 538 degrees Fahrenheit, 282 degrees Celsius. On the uh, plate, it's reading 441 degrees. Now the stovepipe, because that's quite important. At the base of the stovepipe, 300 degrees, that's pretty hot, but what's happening up top? 184 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is cooler up there, which is good, because I don't want to melt the side of the trailer. And in the middle, 202. So. Most of the heat on the stovepipe is right by the stove, which is not really much of a surprise. Now I should be able to boil water pretty quickly tonight. 45 minutes in. Woo! And the water is boiling. Why is it working better tonight? Well, first of all, I've added more insulation around the vent. I've added a another plastic uh, sheet on the far window. I only had it on this window. So I've tightened up on the insulation. It's not as extreme cold outside yet, but that is pretty cold, five degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it's now around 10 o'clock. So the stove's been going for almost five hours. But the good news is, it's still nice in here. It's really comfortable. And I found out a few things that I did differently that are certainly working. First of all, when I filled it last time, I filled it right to the top and I just let it you know, go down gradually and then I'd fill it up again. What I've done this time is I'm just filling it up halfway and once an hour, I get a little skewer and I jiggle around there, sort of stoke up the coals, and it comes alive again. The other thing I did is I've got the, uh, the Titan fan up on my curtain rod, and it's bringing the hot air down, because right up at the peak, it's actually quite warm. It's probably like 80 degrees up there, but the floor is just above freezing. So you need that circulation. So, I'm really happy. Identifying the problems and resolving them made it a lot easier to sleep at night. Well, it's morning. It is about 20 to 8. And the sun's coming up. I filled up fully at midnight right to the top and uh, I was supposed to fill up again at three o'clock but I slept in and so at four o'clock it was starting to get cold again filled it up to the top and then just poked around the coals and it got back up to about 50 degrees so it was really nice warm and cozy I didn't need to layer anymore, not like the, the, the night before where it was really, really, really cold. And you can see I don't have any, uh, any uh, smoke coming out of my breath or anything like that. So I learned a lot. I think I know how, how I can make it work. It will heat a small trailer like this, 
One of the disadvantages of the A-liner, or at least mine, is there's so much aluminum trim, so it just sucks out the heat. Well, it's time for round three, folks. I'm back in the woods. First two attempts were pretty good. First one was a little cold, and I didn't have enough experience to know how to make the stove work at its best. Second night was a little bit better, but it wasn't as cold. Now this is the third night, two weeks later, and that's why things look a little bit different. And that's because we had a phenomena that only happens locally called a Chinook. And what that is, is not a Chinook. A Chinook is a west wind that's a little warm. It's a warm front that comes in from the Pacific and it makes everything warm you know sometimes it'll be 20 or 30 degrees warmer when a chinook blows in unfortunately that chinook is now over and it's going to be cold again tonight there's a cold front coming in so i got here before that happened it's around i think right now it's about freezing it's about zero degrees celsius 32 degrees fahrenheit the sun's just coming uh, going down and it's going to be colder so, I think that's a perfect night for round three of how the stove works on my trailer. Well, before I put the sides up in the trailer, I wanted to show you a few improvements I've made for insulation. And one thing that I did, which I think is working really well, is instead of the original weather stripping I had on the sides, I've taken it all out and replaced it with wraparound foam they use for pipes. You know, for heating in the house and stuff like that, keeping them from uh, from sweating and uh, freezing over. And that's all it is, is pipe insulation, and it wraps right around the side. It's got self-adhesive strips on it. You just peel that on and peel that off and put them in, and they hold well in place. It works really good. The other thing I did was because I was having issues with the sweating of the aluminum, I've covered it up with... Reflectix. Now this doesn't come self-adhesive. I had to spray it with a spray adhesive, but I put it all along the sides, on both sides, and a little bit on this side. So this should help keep the heat in immensely. So as you can see, I've got the stove set up already. I did it the exact same way, so there's no point in showing it twice. But I've done a few little things just to make it a little bit easier. First of all, there's no point in me showing you that digital thermometer because when I looked at the videos, nobody can see what it says anyway. So I've got a dial thermometer here in the back. If you look at it now, you'll see it's uh, about 2 degrees Celsius, uh, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's cool in here, but it's not super cold, but the sun hasn't completely gone down yet, so it will get colder. So I'm just going to use that for reference now. As far as modifications on the stove, I didn't really do an awful lot. One thing I'm going to try to do is I'm not using that quarter inch plate I had on there before. I'm going to use this cast iron frying pan instead. Probably do the same thing, but contain things in that area. Uh, the damper was a little too long and it was getting in the way. So I cut that back and I just bent it up. So I can still operate it, still works the same way, it's just not uh, interfering with the frying pan. Uh, the only other thing I did is this here. And what this is, I had a, uh, a deep fry basket lying around. So I took that and I put it on aluminum rods. There's two quarter inch rods there. And that just suspends this up. It's attached on the back, similar to the way I did the legs here. But the reason I got that is if I want to keep something warm or dry, I can just put them up there like my gloves or socks or whatever, and it'll keep them from, they're not going to burn, but they're going to be very warm and dry. So that should work. Other than that, oh, new thing of propane, full canister. No, Don't start off with half because it doesn't work. So that's about it. I'm going to use these little triangles of junk cardboard to help start things. But other than that, I think we should be ready to get her started. I really appreciate that some of my viewers in the first video were really concerned about my health and safety. Thank you very much for that. But as you can see, I made it back. I'm happy. I'm healthy. There was no major issues. But one question that keeps coming up was, did I bring a carbon monoxide alarm? And the answer is no. Why? 
because all through the design of this stove and the whole system, I had that in mind and I took a lot of steps to reduce it. I couldn't eliminate it, but I did reduce it to a point where I was comfortable with it. Or I would have not continued the experiment. I would have ended it right there and then. It doesn't mean it's not a good idea. As a matter of fact, I have a carbon monoxide alarm and I'll probably use it in the future just so that I can measure. I also made a rain cap with a spark arrester from an old can of dog food. It's a little tricky to erect with a broom, but with a little practice, it's doable. One other thing I forgot. I bought a little humidity dial and it's just magnetic so I can put it on the back there. And right now it says 60% humidity. So I'm going to leave that there. We can monitor it, what happens when the stove really gets going. But right now, I'm just going to take my little bits of cardboard and I'm going to put those in the hopper just before the pellets. And that'll just give you a little bit of space. And I'm thinking that'll help the uh, pellets heat up just a little bit quicker. Well, I'm almost ready to start. So let's just see where we're at right now. It is five o'clock. It is just below freezing. And let me focus in on that. 70% humidity. Now I'm going to go outside. If I can get the door latch. And outside it is. I couldn't read it while I was filming, but it says minus six Celsius or 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as far as pellets goes, I filled it up only to there at the start. I don't want to put too many pellets in so it's not too compressed. Definitely starting easier. I think we have ignition. Let's just check. Still going. Well, hopefully you can see that, but at 621, over on the wall, it is 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So yes, even though it's super cold outside, I did make it to room temperature. Don't need the coat, just have my hoodie. It's just so incredibly comfortable right now. And although I'm boiling water, the Humidity has gone down to about 30% from 70%. So you can really tell there's no doubt this is a dry heat. Well, now the top of the stove is available. I can try another experiment, and that's my homemade stove fan. I made the stove fan from parts of my old Coolatron cooler. Instead of draining energy, it now creates it. Well, here's a little toy that I bought about a year ago, but I never had a chance to use. It's called a flame stower, 
charge with fire, uh, converts heat into electricity. I figure, hey, if it can work with fire, hopefully it'll work with the flame of the stove. Now that I've got ventilation coming from, I've got my own electricity for my fan here. Why not see if I can also charge a phone or batteries for a camera or something like that. So what I believe it's telling me is that this blade is the part that's supposed to get hot. It's supposed to go above the flame, but what I'll do is I'm just going to put it on top of the stove like that, and that way I've got the USB cable on the side, so it shouldn't burn or anything like that. And the only other thing I need is water. Water right here. Just to fill up that reservoir. There we go. Give it a few minutes and we'll see if it does anything. So what I did is I put the flame store underneath my fan so it's got good contact with the top of the stove and you can see there's a little bit of water it's starting to get really hot it's starting to boil but there's a little indicator that says green which is supposed to mean charge so I'm gonna hook up my battery charger look at that it says it's charging awesome my wood stove now makes electricity I can charge my batteries, I can heat my trailer, I don't know if you noticed, but it's getting really hot in here, too hot as a matter of fact, so I'm going to turn it down. I can cook with it, I can uh, bake with it, I'm really pleased. I couldn't ask for anything more. It's not perfect, but for me it's good enough. And the fact is, now I can go out and boondock in the middle of the winter, and I don't have to worry about plugging into a landline or generators or propane furnace. I used a little bit of propane in a torch, that's it. And the chances are I could find another way to start that as well. So yeah, I'm as happy as a pig in sh So in conclusion, does this stove work for me? Perfectly. No problem. However, it's not the concept of, well, you just fill up the hopper and you just go to sleep for five or six hours and expect everything to be warm and toasty, because that will not happen. You can fill the hopper every three hours, but you also have to stoke the coals. So no, there's no free ride. You have to work for it. It has to be maintained. Now, it doesn't mean you have to stay up all night to do it, but it's reasonable to say that in three to four hours after you've gone to bed, you'll have to go up and at least do a little jiggle in the, uh, in the coals to keep things warm. Well, that's not bad. Now, at this point, it looks like I'm just reading a book. And if somebody is skimming through the video, and they'd miss the really important part because this is where I give my results. So the first one is, I'm going to look like I'm taking a big drink of some foamy drink, but this is actually the amount of pellets it takes for one hour. So if you want to know how much you can heat a room to room temperature in one hour, it's this much right here. That translates to one pound of hardwood pellets per hour. With a 40 pound bag, using the stove 12 to 13 hours a day, you're good for at least three nights. Aren't you glad you paid attention? So here's to winter camping. Hmm. Must be fermented in oak. Well, I think that's a night for me. It's about uh, 20 after 11. Uh, it's right now it's about 15 Celsius or just around 60 Fahrenheit. I've let it uh, just go down a little bit. I don't really need it super hot anyway. I could keep it up to room temperature if I wanted to, but it's just burning fuel. It should be a little cooler at night. 
and uh, it's considerably warmer even though it is actually still quite cold out right now um, I think it's about minus 15 Celsius which would be about five seven degrees uh, Fahrenheit so there's still a, a big differential between the uh, temperature outside is and what it is inside but um, I filled it up to the top it should be good I still have to every if I do wake up in the middle of the night I'll uh, I'll just uh, take my little uh, poker and poke the ashes a little bit just to liven it up but hopefully I don't have to uh, put any more uh, pellets in it until say three or four o'clock anyway that's it for me Good night. It's morning. Actually a lot later than it should be. It's around 8.30. Uh, the coals were still hot. It was still 10 degrees in here. So added a few more pellets and now I'm ready for pancakes. I'll leave you with the sound of sizzling pancakes and the promise that the testing is now over. Stay tuned because the next video will be a lot more on nature, cooking, and travel. Please subscribe.